white balance. I know I already covered white balance, but I really want to go into white balance and how important it is. Here I took a picture without a flash with a Nikon D80 camera, 200 millimeter lens, and an ISO 100. No flash. And what happens is my room is the walls, believe it or not, are this color. But this actual piece of paper is white in the background. Okay, this is a, a piece of paper and it's it's draped like this and all the stuff is sitting here on the piece of paper. And what happens is since the room is lit with a fluorescent bulb, the light around the room is bouncing off and causing the paper to be the exact color of the walls. Isn't that cool? That's how light ambient light bounces around and causes things to be other colors. Now to counteract that we have a thing called white balance. And my friend here is about 18% uh, gray. Okay, I always include him because he's kind of cool that way. I found if I <laughs> include him into the vi picture and then just hit it, um, it works out really good. It's just lucky that he's about 18% gray. Now if you don't have a little doom figure of writing death here, I would say, well, there's more professional ways to get 18% gray. And I'm going to show you those. I'm going to go into Photoshop real quick and make a new document. Now, 18% gray. Let's say I did this. I want you to do this, and I want you to use the standard laser printer that we have inside the lab. First off, go like this. Go to your fill tool and go in here. Now you would think that 18% gray is actually 18% gray. In fact, uh, if you type in 0, 0, and then 18 here, um, you'll find out that you'll get a really dark color. Well, let's just fill this with that color. Let me show you the histogram. And now maybe you can make sense of what, what the histogram is really all about. Right now, there's a line on my histogram. Okay, see it? And that line is over here a little bit too far. If it was a true 18% gray, it would be down the center because 18% gray is neutral in photographic terms. So let's go in here and make some adjustments to levels. First off, I will scooch this over until the gray one hits dead center to that. Okay. All right. So if I hit this, nothing should show up on my histogram. Okay, why is that? There's a color here. Why isn't my histogram showing it? Well, it's 18% gray. Congratulations, you just made a, a card that you can go purchase in the store for like 12 bucks. or uh, You can print this out, but you have to print it out on matte paper or you have to print it out on laser paper or a laser sheet. And... No, it's going to take some adjustment because remember what you see is color isn't that directly in tune to the color you're going to get out of your um, printer. But this is a great way to kind of calibrate it really because if I can get it down pat here and then print it out and then make a picture and then use this as the white balance, I know my screen is perfectly calibrated to my printer, to my camera. And it goes all the way back. It, it takes some thinking. I can't exactly describe the process, which it is. It's kind of kind of abstract right now. But I would say, you know, this is a good way of thinking on how to get 18% gray to match all the way from camera to printer. So print this out. And, you know, this is what you do. You include that in a picture. So grab a piece of paper. And you're going to make a table. Okay. And this is what you do. Whoa, not that brush. So I got a table. Whoa. How about I hold shift? That way I make a straight table. And here I have a tripod. Okay. And then I take a piece of paper. And I go, okay, well, I'm going to take this paper, piece of paper and bend it in some manner, like that. And my tripod 
hopefully it's tall enough to handle this. I got a really tall tripod because I'm a really tall dude. And what I'm going to do is just put a piece of tape right here. That's it. Um, of course, you know, support your table so it doesn't float. I would say something like that would do it. And this is a board. And now you can put your little pieces of whatever here. Junk. Just find some stuff around the lab. We got tons of it. And they sit right on this piece of paper flat. All right, now this piece of paper is white. Pure white. And if you want to experiment around, you know, use different color pieces of paper. You're going to find that, you know, it will cast light down and then it'll affect your objects. Become more of a scientist when you're doing stuff like this. It's 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 a lot more entertaining to think that you are a scientist in some manner playing with light. Now, because this white piece of paper is gathering light throughout the room, and I'm shooting with no flash, you should definitely shoot with no flash, and then expose it properly using the uh, camera, and it shows a real-time light meter there. Make sure the light meter me reads zero with no overexposure, and an ISO 100. If you're unfamiliar with all these terms, you should go back to photo 101. Now, in here, however, because he's 18% gray, I'm going to go to develop, and I'm going to click the little dude in one of the lighter parts of him. And voila! Good color. Wow, that's so much better, right? Because, yeah, that is white balance, and that's how powerful white balance is, and that's why white balance is important. Here also I can show you the advantages of because I used white balance in the proper exposure. Now, did I use perfect white balance? No, look at, he's not exactly 18% gray. If he was, this line right here would be exactly in the center of this histogram. So that's a good way to tell, did I pick a good shade of gray? Okay, is he gonna be perfect? No, because you'd have to go buy a professional 18% gray card for it to work. But near enough, that's good color. Um, also, don't forget that most pictures taken by a digital SLR do not sharpen real time. So you have to sharpen him. Voila. Good color. No shadows. Look at that. There's a little a tiny piece of shadow. Why would you want no shadows? Well, sometimes it's, it's, it's a little bit better to have no shadows. Uh, when dealing with the cutout of things. That's why. All right, enjoy the white balance lesson, and uh, on to the next video.